Yes. The idea of the fiscal cliff, well, initially, I think, did seem to be extreme and severe, indicating that you know the the economy will dive into this huge uh, a, another round of a, a significant and long-standing recession. Is I think was an overstatement early on. It does seem like the estimates suggest now that the timing is so important because we are just starting to get out of this last recession that started in 07 and 08 um, in, in the sense that housing market starting to recover, confidence is starting to rise, unemployment rate is still a little stuck but is moving in the right direction. That um, if we don't do the right thing here, that it will push us into probably another recession. Now, we don't know how long or how deep that would be, um, but it will push us into uh, pretty significant reductions in, in income and GDP. And so I think the cliff idea is probably an overstatement, but if we don't do anything, right, we're going to enter into another recession. And that, you know, as we've seen, has taken four or five years for this past one to kind of pull itself out of. Do we really, do we, can we afford that? Uh, can the country can individual households, can unemployment, uh, people who are unemployed still from the press recession, can they survive that? So I think, you know, it's uh, it was a catchy phrase, it's an extreme thought, but I think there's some reality behind it that in fact, um, things will get uglier than where they stand right now if we don't do anything. Yeah, separating the economics from the political aspects of issues like this um, is very difficult. And so in, in when I teach and I talk to my students, you know, I talk about how politics are going to enter into this classroom every day, but economists try to strip away as much as the political bantering and really try to get at the facts. You know, we are driven, we are a discipline that is driven by the facts and try to make estimates about what we think will happen given a certain set of political, political and economic circumstances. The short-term consequences are fairly obvious that we can make pretty good projections that if nothing is done, we will enter into uh, somewhat of a recession. We, don't, we can't say to what extent yet, depending on all the other uh, circumstances. But certainly, um, you know, if some compromises is made, are made in terms of spending and taxes, we can start to address the long-term fiscal health of the country. That is, we can start nibbling away at our federal debt level um, if the right choices are made in terms of a combination of both tax increases and government spending decreases. But if we do nothing, I think the short-term consequences are just too costly, um, especially given that we've got, been through the Great Recession. We are still trying to recover and you know things are just starting to look positive. And the other thing that hasn't come up is that you know what people think is going to happen is really important. The expectations both of individuals and the private sector, the financial markets, they I think if we don't see compromise, they will lose a lot of faith. We saw this a year and a half ago. You know, we saw the stock market pre take pretty significant hits in the short term because they saw a lack of compromise. We saw the, the AAA rating of the US government um, dampen as well. And so I think expectations are huge here. And so by showing some compromise and making some short-term agreements, at least for the next few years, um, markets and individuals react in the right way to keep things moving in the right direction.